Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be doing a full setup and replace some pickups on this 1999 Gibson Explorer. So all in all, the guitar is in pretty good shape. Especially for its age, 1999 was at 23 years. Just normal wear and tear. It's probably a little bit of light buckle rash and stuff that you really can't see with the camera. There's a couple worn spots here. I do have some black lacquer that I could probably cover that up, but I don't know. I think that's it's just kind of part of the course for right there. Rosewood fretboard, 22 frets. Uh, frets are all in really good shape. So we'll polish them, but there's no need to re-crown or anything like that. Definitely going to address this nut. Yeah, I don't know how well this is showing up, but the string, I mean, it's sitting partially out of this which is good but the slot is a little too wide for the string i mean it's not terrible this is the, this does look like the factory nut uh, i don't particularly like how the wound or the plain strings are sitting down in it so we are going to replace this do something a little bit better we're going to use um, unbleached bone we're going to replace both of these pickups with uh, a pair of Gibson 57 classics sticking with the Gibson theme for everything which is kind of cool looks like original bridge original tailpiece probably all original controls inside or maybe who knows uh, I think there's been all kinds of different pickups in this guitar because this isn't the original mounting ring either these strap pegs here this is actually for a recessed Dunlop strap lock so you're supposed to dr actually drill out the body and this is supposed to sit flush with the edge and they've got that on both sides uh, the owner does not want strap locks or anything like that so so I do have a pair of strap pegs I can put on there that do match what came off of a Les Paul custom so it's the same same style and everything so it should be what would have come on this guitar originally first things first Let's just get the strings off. We'll get to the pickups. So here's how you can tell the nut needs to be replaced. The string is stuck. It's stuck in the nut. So that's going to cause a lot of tuning problems. We want the string to glide freely over its slot in the nut for every string. When I first brought this guitar in and tried to tune it up, the first thing I heard was a lot of ping 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 and when you hear that the string is binding and slipping in this nut here so that's a sure sign it needs some work i'm not gonna like i said i'm not gonna mess around with trying to fix what's here i'd rather just replace it that's nice that we have all the original pots here uh, i think also what we're going to do is take the master tone pot and turn that into a base cut just for the um the neck pickup. I'm going to pull all this out because we're going to have to clean. I want to clean up all these pots and everything. You know, there's no, no shielding or anything in here. And I think since we have both of the pieces open, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and let's shield all the cavities in here with some, uh, some paint shielding paint and this jack is quite loose so we can tighten that up here too well actually to make it easier let's just pull it out because we don't need it right now and say to prep for painting you don't want any uh, you don't want any surfaces that are too smooth so normally you want at least two coats of this stuff um, if you can get three, get three. If you can get five, get five. And man, be careful because you don't want to drip this stuff on the paint. It's just, it just sucks to get off. You know, I see a lot of guitars that aren't shielded and you know, maybe they don't make noise. It's a little step for some extra protection. It's like, why not, why not just take it? It's not that hard to do. Most people might not ever encounter a problem without shielding it. I've been on a lot of stages where there's RF from places that you wouldn't even think, like, for example, the stage lights, the dimmers on the lights will go up and down and it'll cause interference with the guitar. 
I've seen you switch out a guitar. It only does it with one guitar. It only does it with Les Paul or something. It's it's pretty wild. So we're just trying to eliminate variables here. So the pickguard doesn't have anything on it either. You could do this a number of different ways. We could just paint it or we could cut out and put some shielding over it. What I don't want is to paint this thing, stick it down on there, and then it rip up some of the clear coat later on, like if this paint decides to stick to the lacquer. Cool. Well, there you go. Got the pickup cavity cover shielded. I've got the scratch plate also shielded. I accidentally cut it across here, but not that worried about that because there's a bunch of wood there and I'll show you what else I'm going to do to negate that. This is going to be covered by the pig guard and so is this. Just take your paint, come up close where you know it's never going to bleed over here and just run the dab paint across here. Make sure that's, you don't need a lot. Sometimes I just do, maybe just do like a little seam like this and that's enough, you know, to give you, to give yourself continuity from each section. It's a good idea to have this be one of the last things you're going to do for the day so you can walk away from it from a night and come back and then it'll be dry. But I'm going to use a heat gun with not a lot of heat, really just air, and we're going to dry this thing up a lot faster. All right, so now I'm just going to, we're going to use all these pots, but we're going to clean them up, get all this old solder off. So it's a good idea to clean all the pots while you have them out. For pots and faders, I like to use this stuff. It's uh, just called Fader Lube F5. I've got a wire running through my control cavity here. It's run tight to here, so you might not be able to see it. But I've just got it screwed down with a washer here, screwed down here. All right, so Gibson's and a lot of other brands, they actually paint the nuts when they're in. So you want to... So you want to score around it so it doesn't chip up any paint when you uh, knock it out. Yeah. It doesn't take much because once you got it, it'll just come right out. And that's nice and clean. Lightly brush it to clean it up. Yeah, I don't want to actually file anything. I'm going to use the old nut as a guide. Pretty close. It definitely doesn't fit yet. It's not straight. I'm not that worried about it because I do the final fit by hand. All right, after much, much sanding, the wet nut fit in there, it's snug. It doesn't move, does not rock side to side, which is what you want. Yeah, 0.055, almost 0.060 in the center. Ooh, a little high over here. Yeah, we did. Oh no. He's got a weird high spot right here. There's just a small hump right there. Because if I tap it here on the, yeah. Oh yeah, man, I can fucking see the fret coming out. Holy shit. So here is one of the problem frets. You can just see how much that goes down when I press on it. 
So whenever I'm evening this thing out, it's popped up on both ends here. Yeah, so whenever I'm trying to even it out on this side, it pops up on the other side. I mean, look how bad that is. I could probably all, I could probably let this whole thing out by hand if I needed to. So, and I've also got another loose fret down here at this end too. I noticed this one was loose too. I mean, I barely touched it and it came up. Yeah, that's loose. It should take a little bit of force to get that up. So I'm going to have to get creative and wick some glue underneath there to get all this stuff to sit level. I'm not going to lie. This sucks. I thought this was just going to be a really fun, quick setup video. Man, I don't know if any of them are any good, really. But, I mean, I can flex all of them. God damn, that fucking sucks. So I did end up pulling this one. I whipped some super glue in there and clamped it back down, and that one seems okay. Yeah, man, they're all going to need to be reseated. Well, I don't even want to tell you how awful that was, uh, but I got it done. I pretty much had to go through and pull every single bad fret and reseat it. There was about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight of them. Looks like I'm gonna have to do uh, a fret level on the whole thing, which I was really trying to avoid because the frets themselves are not in bad shape. This is definitely a uh, using what you got scenario because I think the right thing to do would have been to just replace the popped out frets all together or even just do an entire fret job. <laughs> the guy's coming to pick this guitar up in the morning, so it's already about midnight now. Um, like I said, I thought this was just going to be a, a nice little setup video and a pickup swap, but instead we are reinventing the wheel. But whatever, it's going to play great when we're done, so just keep on going. Alright, so I'm very happy with that. We are crowned and polished. All right, so we get the scratch plate and pickups back on here. So we've got two, what I've been told, 57 classics here. And I've got the nice Gibson patent applied for. So I've got a plenty of springs, but we are not gonna go with springs. We're gonna use surgical tubing instead I really want to go to bed but my soldering iron's still hot so I have bent some bus wire and this is pretty thick stuff and I'm going to use this as my ground bust. I'm going to ground all the back of all the pots with this. All right. Well, not only will that ground everything together, but that's also going to keep all the pots from spinning should those nuts come loose. Because even right now, I almost don't even need to tighten the nuts down and those pots aren't going anywhere. So that's, that's awesome. That's one of the, that's the main reason I just used that really big, thick bus wire for all that stuff. All right. Well, so far so good. The bus wire, I, we just wired the humbucker up for right now, just so I could tune it up and put it through a tuner. Um, I've got the nut 
rough cut in there. Sorry I didn't videotape that. It's been a long night. But uh, so far so good. Doing step and a half bends and nothing's fretting out. Kind of scared to because of that fret pop issue. But but so far so good. It's it's playing great. The frets are even. You know we lost uh, a little bit of height there, but they're still plenty high, almost 0 .050 inches up. So uh, I'm just gonna fine tune the nut now and uh, wire it back up. Now we have to take the wire from the neck pickup. And instead of starting at the volume pot, we're going to run it over here, which is going to be the bass cut control. So what we settled for on this guitar is a .0022 microfarad capacitor jumping over the circuit when this knob is all the way up. Might as well be bypassed. As you turn it down, you're bleeding some signal to ground, and the signal that's not being bled is bypassing the pot through this capacitor, and only the treble frequencies are passing or anything above where that 0.0022 microfarad capacitors cutoff point is and I have a 25k resistor it makes it so when you turn this knob all the way down you're not bleeding all of your bass signal to ground it makes it so the neck pickups not so booming all right and here's our finished product like I said I actually put this on the buffing wheel for a little bit not to try and refinish it it really just take the slight dull sheen that it had to it off so it's still got you know just regular surface scratches scratches from clothes rags stuff like that so it still has its nice character Gibson 57 classic plus pickups sound very nice neck volume bridge volume and a bass cut control so with this all the way down your pickup still sounds nice and full it's just not the bass isn't overcoming everything else in the signal chain the fretwork like I said really really happy with that kind of beyond stoked because i didn't really know what we were going to end up with at the end if more frets were going to pop if frets were going to start popping under string tension but no it's 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 perfect uh cut in a new bone nut nice and polished and it's staying in tune rather well so yeah, the Gibson Explorer, man, it is back together and it's fucking rocking, dude. It's I'm really, really, really happy with the way this turned out. Just because that fucking moment when these frets had all these problems, I was uh, afraid I was going to have to throw my hands up. But we got it back together. It looks good. You can't tell that any of that work was done for the most part. Aside from all that, the most important part is the guitar sounds fucking great. I mean, I can go like, Check this out. See what I mean? See how good that sounds? But just to demonstrate what we did with the, uh, the bass cut, because I feel like this is an important part of the guitar, is, so, bridge pickup, and again, I have, uh, the guitar just going into a tube screamer uh, into a Marshall, so which you pretty much see on every video. And again, these are 57 Classic Plus pickups. Sound really nice. <laughs> Very, very nice. Very nice and smooth. Even with all the uh, overdrive and distortion, it's not like, it's not harsh, it's not brittle. So moving on to the neck pickup. So that's with the bass cut down a little bit. If I roll it back up. Damn it. Call him back. Anyway, with the bass cut all the way up, which is essentially out of the circuit, I can just turn it down halfway just to cut a little bit of the bass out. Now, 
it really just evens things out. If you think about the guitar as a plane, you get more low end the further away from the bridge that you get. And that's really why a neck pickup just has that sound, that boomy sound. There's way more bass and low end up here or down here than there is up here towards the bridge. So I find that having a bass cut still gives you the option to have a nice full warm sound out of a neck pickup. <laughs> you can just dial it back just enough to almost get closer to a single coil sound. Up. Halfway. So all the way down. So it's still it's still usable all the way in the down position, but it's a, it's a little thin. So you can just just let a chord ring out and kind of bring it up to where your tastes are. And I think we landed about halfway. Same part again. the middle position much so middle position with all the volumes all the way up so again you hear that that low end of that neck pickup uh, kind of overpowers the signal a little bit so you can still roll the bass back just a little bit when in the middle position so Way back up. I feel like that's actually giving you more of a blend of the two instead of one overpowering the other. It's really just the low end overpowering. So. That's actually kind of neat. That's with both volumes all the way up, bass cut all the way down. part of any of these uh, repairs is sometimes you got to give them back. Thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking around through this adventure. Uh, it was harrowing to say the least. I was afraid for a minute there I bit off a little bit more than I could chew but the results are great. Guitar is playing awesome. Customer is happy and yeah. Anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.